Here are the top five underrated but awesome cantrips in D&D. Sapping Sting. Buckle up, kids. This is maybe the most underrated spell in the game. Like, I bet maybe 80% of you have never heard of it. Sapping Sting is not high damage. It deals 1d4 necrotic on a failed constitution save, takes an action to cast, and has a range of 30 feet. But it also has this interesting little extra feature, where the creature damaged by this spell falls prone. No other cantrip in the game does this, and for good reason, it's borderline busted. Knocking a creature prone gives it disadvantage on all attack rolls. It gives all creatures within five feet advantage on attack rolls against them, and they have to use half their movement speed to stand up. Landing Sapping Sting on a creature your ranger, fighter, or paladin is engaged with is basically GG. Your mates can use their turn to crush that creature with attacks at advantage or grapple them so they can't move or stand up. They are trapped. Normally, shoving a creature costs an attack to maybe knock them prone if they fail a save. Shoving doesn't deal damage, and it also has a size restriction. You can't shove a creature more than one size larger than you. But Sapping Sting can theoretically bring a Tarrasque to its knees. Size matters not. More importantly though, this thing is disgusting for flying enemies. If you're a flying race, you can engage creatures hundreds of feet in the air and Sapping Sting them prone. On a failed save, they instantly fall. That 1d4 damage starts to add up when you factor in the 20d6 bludgeoning when they hit the ground. Even from ground level, forcing a flying chimera or a bone devil to faceplant from 30 feet in the air is powerful at no spell slot cost. Finally, there's some good memes you can get out of it. Forcing your friends prone as a classic prank, or forcing a monster to bow to you before you execute them with a bonus action spiritual weapon. And the great thing about this cantrip is because it's a wizard spell, anyone can get it if you take the high elf race or the magic initiate feats. So any creative application you can imagine, you can do. Magic Stone. Whenever a spell can be cast as a bonus action, pay attention. It's probably breakable. Magic Stone lets you touch up to three pebbles and make them magic stones. Oh, that's why it's called that. <laughs> For the next minute, you or someone else can throw one of those pebbles up to 60 feet, dealing 1d6 plus your spellcasting modifier on a hit. For a start, that is the highest damaging cantrip in the game at level one. Toll the Dead is a situational 6.5 average damage, whereas this is a reliable 6.5 average damage, maybe even 7.5 if you start custom lineage. But the real power here isn't just damage for you, it's damage for your companions. The classic combo is to use this with the spell Tiny Servant, a spell that gives you for 8 hours 3 Tiny Servants. Oh, that's why it's called that! <laughs> These are three little objects with arms and legs that exist for eight hours and they follow your commands, like throw any rocks I give to you. But you can weaponize this with other spells that give you servants, like animate dead or just NPCs or children. Put them to work throwing stones. They use your stats for the attack and damage roll. So three orphans throwing a rock each turn is 3d6 plus nine damage for your bonus action every turn at level one. And if they die, who's gonna complain? Their parents? It just works. For real though, there is only one creature in the game that's immune to magical bludgeoning damage. The mighty servant of Leuk O. So unless you're literally fighting that, this spell turns any otherwise useless NPCs on the board into sustained non-concentration damage every turn for your bonus action with no concentration. This spell is a whole build on its own. It's also cute with the crusher feet, letting you throw a rock at someone and then move them five feet when you hit. It is low-key a dream of mine to knock an enemy off a cliff with this interaction. Great spell. Okay, so do you remember that awesome scene from Jurassic Park? No, not that scene. The, the, the stuff about the dinosaurs coming back. Remember how awesome that was? Now, take that mental image. No, not that. The, the extinct creatures coming back, okay? Take that and put it into D&D. That's right, baby. We're talking Mage Hand Press's The Book of Extinction. The Book of Extinction is a new way to play D&D and learn about biology and conservation. This supplement teaches you about real extinct animals and presents them as engaging and magical monsters with awesome artwork. You learn about real life natural history while also fighting a giant nightfire worm. 
It contains over 100 extinct animals, megaflora, prehistoric lycanthropes, and new races and subclasses to play in your game. It is out right now on Kickstarter, link in description. Do it for sexy Jeff Goldblum! Mage Hand Press's Book of Extinction out now. Shape Water, my favorite spell in the game. You are a one cantrip waterbender. Shape Water costs an action to cast and lets you choose an area of water within 30 feet that fits in a five foot cube and manipulate it. The standard advice here is to carry around a bag of holding filled with water, so you always have some on hand. The spell has four effects. Move the water five feet. Form the water into simple shapes and animate them. This lasts for one hour. Change the water's color or opacity. Or freeze the water. It remains frozen for one hour. If you cast the spell multiple times, you can have up to two of its non-instantaneous effects happening at the same time. So first things first, this is completely lethal, right? Simple sorcerer combo, shape water a five foot cube of water over someone's head, and then quicken spell shape water to freeze it and let it fall. Do you know how big five foot cube of ice actually is. That is 286 pounds of weight you are dropping on somebody's skull. You can also shape that water into a freaking spike if you wanted to. This is a metal as fuck way to execute someone or just as a threat to get them talking. But memes aside, this spell is busted in so many other ways. Five foot cubed of ice is easily enough to block a door as you run through it or to freeze a patch of ground and potentially make people slip. The classic application is to shape water into a keyhole and then freeze it so it expands and breaks the lock. But you can get really creative here. Throw boiling water into an enemy's face, shape water into a ladder and freeze it to climb, or extract drinkable H2O from seawater. Or just change the opacity of the water to pitch black for an hour before you go into an encounter. Now you have a five foot cube of heavy obscurement you can move around to shield you as you sneak by or abuse in a fight. This spell slaps. I love it. Friends. Friends is one of those spells that, if you abuse it, can pretty much break a campaign. It takes an action to cast and gives you advantage on all charisma checks to interact with a creature of your choice that isn't hostile towards you for the next minute. That is amazing. No saving throw, instant advantage on every persuasion or deception check directed at a town guard or a king is kind of crazy. The downside is that after the spell ends, that person becomes hostile towards you. So if you're manipulating someone, make it fast. However, this downside might low key be the best part of the spell. Combine friends with a changeling race or the spell disguise self, and you have the perfect disguise. Cast friends on the shopkeep for a great discount, and sure, when the spell ends, they'll be pissed off, at the three foot tall kobold with a wooden leg you were pretending to be when you did the interaction. You could even use this to frame people. Disguise self as a guard you don't like and cast friends on the guard captain to get some key information and then sneak off. When the captain realizes they were manipulated, the retribution will fall on somebody else. Unethical, but powerful. And now here's the meme. Friends has a range of self. It targets you and then you choose any creature in the multiverse to affect. It, 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 it has no restriction. After one minute, that creature becomes hostile towards you. So friends is the fastest way in the game to pick a fight with the devil god Asmodeus or Tiamat or an ancient gold dragon. If your DM runs with the whole disguise self thing as a way to frame other people with friends, you could potentially put some poor soul on the shit list of Asmodeus. Forget shape water, that is the most metal way to murder someone with a cantrip ever. That is obviously an interpretation of the spell that would require DM approval, but even at its most simple form, Friends is an incredibly creative and powerful spell that leads to some great roleplay moments. And before number five, here's an honorable mention. Create Bonfire is a concentration spell that creates a fire in a five foot cube and lasts for one minute. Any creatures that move through it or start their turn there take 1d6 fire damage on a failed dex save. Damage wise, it's kind of awesome. There are plenty of cantrips that deal 1d8-ish damage on a failed save, but this one sticks around, potentially dealing more damage over time. It's especially powerful if you can place it at a choke point and force enemies to move through it to get to you. It's also a nice option for druids who want to wild shape into a creature while having a concentration spell to hold onto. For no spell slot cost, that's a nice combo. Plus, this thing ignites objects and five foot cubed of fire is a lot of 
fire. If you're looking to torch a town, this is a great spell for people lacking firebolt. Blade Ward. Blade Ward is a cantrip that struggles to stand out. You can only learn so many cantrips, so giving one up that could have been firebolt or eldritch blast is tough. It is a great effect. You get resistance to all bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage from all weapons, even magical ones, until the end of your next turn. But it takes an entire action to cast. It's definitely underrated, but I wouldn't call it amazing. Unless you're a Bladesinger. Yes, we're going deep. Bladesingers have a special extra attack at 6th level, where you can replace one of your attacks each turn with a cantrip. The obvious choices are Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade, but Blade Ward is another great option if you're looking to go full-on tank. Also, the Blade attack cantrips technically don't work with Shadow Blade rules as written, and Shadow Blade is like the greatest of all time spell for Bladesingers. If your DM rules that you can't Booming Blade with a Shadow Blade, then Blade Ward might literally be the best option for close quarters fighting. You see, in D&D, there are two ways to tank. High hit points and resistances, like Barbarians, or high AC, like Blade Singers. Blade Ward Singers do both. A level 6 Blade Singer can easily get themselves to 25 AC with the Shield spell. The downside is, you're still a wizard. If you get hit, you're gonna get squished. Blade Ward effectively doubles your hit points at the cost of one of your attacks, letting you dance through enemies while poking them for damage, and if you do get hit, you just shrug it off. Seriously, the Blade Ward Singer might be the most frustratingly unbreakable build for melee-focused enemies. You keep them distracted, wasting their attacks as they try to break through, and the rest of your team pummels them from a distance. Sure, you sacrifice some damage for that serious defensive power, but unlike the damaging cantrips, Blade Ward is always on. You don't need to land a hit for it to do something, the move is guaranteed. For players who are looking for an interesting tank wizard option, the Blade Ward Singer is unorthodox, but mighty. This month's issue of the DM Secret Weapon has the Witch Druid Circle of the Coven, letting you turn into undead beasts and brew potions. You can grab that on Patreon along with hundreds of pages of other subclasses, races, maps, adventures, and loads more. Link up here and also down there. Check that out, remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and yeah, I'll see you next time.